Monster. After a close loss to the Lions, it is time for Washington to go ahead and take on the Tigers. That's right, Cincinnati is up next. It's the revenge game for Samaj P. Ryan, the once feared Redskins running back who was here in Washington. I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh at that. This is <laughs> that, so, that broke this is so up. absurd to even contemplate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's why I put it in there. It's a revenge game for a guy who got like two yards of carry here. Um, but this is Alex back with you. Steve is here, of course. Jamal is here. He is on the phone. Jamal, I hope you're doing well. Uh, we, we've been, we're getting close to the Thanksgiving day, so we had to spend about a half hour figuring out our plans for this upcoming schedule. Uh, Dear NFL, please yeah. do not put Washington on Thanksgiving Day ever again. Thank right. you to every media for, member ever. <laughs> yes. Please, for our sake and for Washington's sake, because we don't need to sit here and watch them <laughs> be I, we the don't only game headache. on TV. Yeah, we don't need like, the headache. Put us, put us on Sunday, 1 o'clock. Like, keep it. Keep the status quo for yes. us. We don't need none of that stuff. I, I would, I would, <laughs> uh, my favorite season will be the season where somehow we play all 1 o'clock Sunday games. And we got close this year. So they won't. They can't though. That's not though. You have to have a I Thursday know. game and a Monday game. Uh, you or you don't have to have a Monday game. No, I thought no, you have to have one prime time game. game. You you have to have a certain number of prime time games, but it doesn't have to be Monday. But you do have to have a Thursday because the Thursday game is a competitive balance thing. Right. You know? right, right. Yeah. That. And, and you know that. Whole... But for the love of God, yeah. stop putting us on Thanksgiving Day. I can handle a regular Thursday once a year. Right. I cannot handle year after year after year of Thanksgiving Day games. I really can't. I, I, yeah, and we've done it. I think four years since we started the podcast. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's I, been we only weird. missed like one year. I think. Of yeah, this. exactly, exactly. All right, well, it's not. It's not fun. It's not fun, and you know, uh, it, it's bad enough that we always have to play Dallas too. Except for that one time we played the Giants, but. You know, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm with you guys. I'm sick of uh, Thanksgiving football. Uh, the before we get into the Cincinnati game, there was a story that came out in the post of uh, something that I kind of assumed everyone figured out and knew, but the post was making a you know story out of it, and that is that the Washington Redskins original Americans Foundation, uh, which was set up a couple years ago by Dan Snyder to you know, handle his PR problem with, you know, Native Americans, uh, the, the Post suddenly realized that this foundation's kind of been dead for a while. And I already thought this was something we all knew because they hadn't put out a press release in three or four years and they hadn't done anything in three or four years that Dan Snyder basically, you know, put $2 million in this foundation for, I don't know, a year, two years. And that was it. it and then it died. Like, did, didn't we all kind of know this? Like, why was I this a surprise? It. Yeah, I didn't know it. I assumed it. The thing is, um, this wasn't really designed to solve his PR problem with Native Americans. It was designed to solve his problem with people who think he's being discriminatory towards Native Americans, which largely are not Native Americans. Oh, well, um, sure. You know, it's just kind of ironic that way. But, but you know... Basically, it didn't work because everybody assumed that it was just kind of pandering. And after that, he never did anything with it again. And we never heard from it till right. today. Well, you know, but and, I think he just figured out it was pandering. And so it's the end. And that's it. I think I mean, it was pandering. He, I, if anyone thinks Dan Snyder was sincere about, you know, his concern for their plight. Yeah, of well, course not. I mean, yeah. I, I, he also was really concerned about all that HR scandal stuff that happened, and he was really <laughs> concerned. And, oh, and he's the best uh, businessman in the world when it comes to running amusement parks and you know <laughs> fast food <laughs> restaurants built in the 1950s. And uh, he, he's a great, great movie maker. You know, like this is all his resume. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that lawsuit probably on IJB, by the way. Oh coming yeah, up, yeah, Alex and I. <laughs> yeah, we probably will because uh, Chris is out, so Steve's got to keep it focused on stuff I actually pay attention to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, there you go. Can't uh, do ratings. Yeah, yeah, but so uh, I thought that was weird that people were making a story out of this. Uh, but Steve brought up a good point. Like we, there isn't a whole lot going on with the whole name discussion lately either. Uh, when it comes to this team, uh, I, I know. Except for the fact that. 
<laughs> they 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 updated the name of the um the park that right. they, that they practice in uh now my question would be uh and I guess this is a just business question but my question would be like I, I, we knew that the that that little emblem or sign statue whatever it had to be changed and updated right but why would you put forth such an effort the way it looks it looks really nice but why would you put forth the effort to doing that if you're not if you're going to just change it within a year well like, that's it, a pretty good question <laughs> yeah that's a pretty good you got to figure signs like that aren't cheap right so you got to figure they put it on the building and they put it on the sign that's headed right. into the park now now Both. the the one on the front of the bill of the entrance not on the building itself that that I mean that's I could do that. It's made of wood. I could do that at home for a few. Yeah, but yeah. Let's just assume they put a hundred grand in and all that. Yeah. Which you know it might not be that much, but let's assume that's the ballpark for an NFL team. That's chump change. Right. You know, but I think Jamal has a good point, in which is. Despite the fact that it's chump change, number one, Dan Snyder is a cheapskate when it comes right. to everything except player salaries, and that's been out there for years. Um, so I don't think he would want to do that, you know, unless he really had to or he'd shell out that kind of money. And you know, like Jamal said, it looks permanent. It's a it's a regular sign. You know, it, it's just odd that they would do it, especially now we're in the end of November. Right. The season's going to be over here in, you know, seven weeks. So why are you doing it now? I have a theory. I, I think we all know the theory, and I think we all kind of see where it's all going. And yeah. I'll add something to that theory. The team, you know, they've been doing their weird uh, online, hey, tell us names you like. And, and they didn't really publicize this, but apparently they've started polling names online, too, uh, from fans. And I don't think it's an official whoever wins is the new name type poll, but... They they put out eight different names. I, I think it was eight. Oh wow, eight. Yeah, and it, including first off, they put red tails in twice. One as one word, one as red space tails. Which you know, I don't know why you would bother with that. Um, but um, they did that. It was red wolves, obviously. Uh, they had listed in their uh, no name. Just keep it as is. Uh, and I don't know how that pulled, uh, but that was out there. And then they had some terrible ones. They, I mean, well, they had Warriors. Warriors, you know, we all kind of know that's the safe generic thing they want to do. But they had Generals. They had uh, Heroes. They had Rough Riders. And I'm forgetting a couple others. But Is Teddy Roosevelt going to be the mascot well, for that? I, see, I don't mind that, except it just lends itself oh, no. to so many terrible you know, gay jokes and, you know, sex jokes and things like that. For Rough Riders? Yes. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But Red Tails, you could do the same thing with. Sure, you sure. You Look, can here's it. the thing, Alex. Think about this. No, this is just garbage, okay? Right. Um, that's all, that's all was, window dressing, I know. Well, yeah, because when corporations do name change, they hire very expensive PR firms to do market research. Right. You don't put a poll out on Twitter or whatever and have it mean anything. I think what the thing you're, I didn't see the thing you're describing, but um, they would do that just to make people think they care, not because they care about the no, answer. It's to make people think they're doing something. <laughs> Could be nine times out of 10 already got something. Right. Or 9.5 times out of 10. Look, they haven't, I haven't, I checked on the trademarks like a month ago. Right. I haven't checked since. I would have checked today if I'd realized we were going to talk about this. But um, the only trademarks they filed that are new is for Washington football team. Right. They have not filed any trademarks. And so we are now at the point – we're past the point where they can realistically get a trademark approved for the beginning of next season. Right. That's why Jason Wright, what, a couple months ago, a month ago, said it may extend through 2021. Um, but I, I think more and more – and I know, Alex, that's what you were – you know, you've – you were hinting at this too. More and more, I think they're going to go with Washington football team. I think it's Dan Snyder's way of being able to say, I kept my promise. I didn't change the name, you know, right. It's it, which is stupid and backwards, but I think that's might be what he's thinking. Yeah. I mean, it's the Dan Snyder billionaires mentality of always operate out of spite. And yeah. Yeah. So it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, and I, I think you make a, you guys both made a great point. They put a lot of money into signage up there. Uh, and in the stadium, 
like, don't forget, they didn't think people were in the stadium, and they put money into putting new logos and stuff up in the stadium, which is That's just, a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I- including little seals that they put on, like, each seat with the new logo. Did they really? Yeah, the if, you went, if you really go and look at all the rebranding stuff, little things like that, you don't do that if you're not planning on keeping this for a while. Yeah. Big things, maybe, I... but you don't do... You don't buy business cards and little things, <laughs> you know. If they are actually planning on finding a new name, they're doing it in the worst possible way imaginable. Sure. And they're doing it in the slowest possible way imaginable because it doesn't appear as though they've done any work, real work on it at all. No, it doesn't. It, I, and I don't think they have. Well, except for, except for, uh, I think this is the word pander, um, pander to their fan base. Um, put on a, you know, a little facade that you know we're going to make sure that you guys get engaged but but you know i don't i excuse me i always had like reservations or was cautious about the amount of attention or or inclusion that they give to the fan base and it's not necessarily a they don't deserve it type deal it's like you know if you do too much how much is, how much are you really taking into consideration? Like there's gonna be a million people sending you send you ideas. Um and how much effort are you gonna really uh how much effort are you gonna allow them to put in if you're just gonna stick with, you know, what you already came up with? I don't I, that that's just my main concern. Yeah. I think I think it, it really is football team that's gonna end up being it or something like so around like something to that nature, but I don't think it's gonna be anything different. I think you're right. I think that's what they're going for. Maybe they're, you know, maybe they were waiting on Jason Wright to get in and get his feet wet, you know, about it. I guess it's possible, but that's, you know, they absolutely are pandering. That is the point. Uh, you know, stuff like, you know, the if they put out a poll or whatever Alex saw, yeah, you, you know, that's just pandering. It doesn't mean anything. That's like politicians will send out polls to their own base and say, do you agree with my position and, you know, vote yes or no. It's important. That's just pandering. Sure. Of course. You know, and that's what, that's exactly what, what the team is doing. Yeah. And I, I mean, I obviously, you know, I don't think that that poll means anything. I'm just, I, I just thought I pointed out cause I saw it. No, um, it's a good, I'm glad you did because uh, that's about the only thing I've seen about the name in months is this yeah, poll. And yeah, I didn't yeah. even see that. And, and it, again, some of those names were terrible. Like, I, I don't know, like, Heroes just seems a little too... Oh, oh, Bisons, that was another one. I'm like, who the... Why would you even put this on there? You're never going to get Bisons because there's already a Buffalo team. <laughs> you know? Well, also, I mean, were there Bison in the... Ever in, you know... Bison, were there ever Bison in the Washington, D.C. area? There were Bison everywhere, Steve. They were all over the, the place. Howard University's uh, name is Bison, so Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that, too. I don't, know how I just want to... I don't think that's what it just seems better if you were like in Oklahoma, perhaps. That's all. Yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, guys, we should really move into the game that's coming up here. Uh, oh, like, I, like I said, the Samaj P. Ryan revenge game <laughs> uh, between Washington and Cincinnati. Uh, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to watch a lot of Cincy. I know you guys are all 22 guys, so you probably have seen a few games watching the yeah. film. Yeah. Um, I watched some of them today. Uh, I watched their last game versus Pittsburgh, and I've you know watched some of the others. But this looks to me like a, a game between two bad teams that are bad in, for different reasons. Um, Washington okay. is bad oh. because we make turnovers and a lot of mistakes like that. Uh, Cincinnati just plays sloppy, sloppy football. Uh, you know, and I, I and there is. A subtle difference there, if you catch my drift. Like, Washington can put up 300 yards passing like we did last week, and we still lose a game because, you know, one costly turnover decides things. Uh, Cincinnati will just... It's like watching the Keystone Cops over there sometimes. Uh, they're, look, they're just not a good football team. However, comma, Joe Burrow is pretty good. Yes. He's better than I thought he would be. Joe Burrow does not play like a rookie. I think the whole key to this game, if you want to know how to beat the Bengals, you got to make Joe, you got to focus on Joe Burrow, make him inefficient mm-hmm. because he's what he does at a very advanced level. I notice he reads the field very well. Not only does he read the field very well, he knows already how to freeze DBs and linebackers with his eyes and then real quick rotate over to his real to his target. He did it over and over again to, mm-hmm. um, 
who was the game before the the Steelers, <laughs> um, the Titans, Tennessee. He did that to yeah. the Tennessee Titans. And repeatedly. They kicked the Titans' butt. Yeah, frankly. yeah. And so I think the the running game isn't very good. Um, Joe Mixon's hurt, and Mixon wasn't having a good season anyway before right. he got hurt. He's got a foot problem. He didn't practice Wednesday. I would assume he's not going to play, but we don't know that for a fact. That, that's why Samaj P. Ryan's in there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Samaj P. all of 48 yeah. yards, or 83 yards, but, rather. But still, like, he, he's, he's it's like with Alfred Morris a few weeks ago. He's only there because the number one guy's hurt, and they needed backups, you know. Yeah. But the point here is, you know, just to throw some numbers out, they are uh, on rushing. They're averaging four yards a carry, eh, you know, 105 yards per game. Eh, you know, none of that's very good. Burrow, though, 65% completion percentage, quarterback rating of almost 90. You know, he's passed for 2,400 yards already. He's, this is what really blew my mind. This man is second in the NFL in pass attempts. Wow. wow I didn't realize he was that high. Yeah, me neither. Mm. You know, me neither. Um, and he's getting sacked a ton. That's the other thing. Yeah, he is getting just annihilated in the pocket. They, they've surrendered thirty-two sacks already. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So if you want to know how to beat the Bengals offense, I think it's number one. It's focus on Burrow. You can't have mistakes in coverage. You have to have linebackers who aren't going to blow. You know, I'm not saying Washington can do any of this because they haven't all year, but you know, you, you need to have quality zone coverage and linebackers who are not going to get fooled and then you need to hit Joe Burrow. That's how to beat the Bengals, I think. Well, and, and I think at the same time, uh from what I saw, their receiving core has actually got some talent there. Uh the rookie they picked up Higgins. Uh I think it's is yeah, it, T T Higgins. Yeah, T Higgins. He he comes up with some big clutch plays here and there. Uh yeah. you know, he I don't know if he's uh number 1 you know, he's Terry not. McLaurin type, but he's a very good possession receiver. Receiver Tyler Tyler Boyd is their number one receiver. Yeah, <laughs> by yeah. yards and catches. I mean, who would have thought? I mean, on a team that has AJ Green, yeah, who's become a secondary figure. I mean, it's T Higgins and Tyler Boyd are the two guys to watch out for. I wonder if AJ Green team. is kind of just aging, and, and I mean, oh. you know, he, you know, he, he's oh. got those skill sets that sometimes when you get older, you slow down and it, and you disappear. I mean, so he's, he's 32. Played, he's played all nine. Um, I'm looking at his numbers now. He has uh, 68 targets. 60 uh, 31 targets. Okay. Catch, six, 68. 68, so damn near 70. But, um, 68 targets for 31, 31 receptions. Um, mm. Only 316 yards. So he's – and no touchdowns. So he's actually – he's going through it right now. It's not looking too good. Yeah. I mean, it's – it's if you want to know who the they should need to watch out for, it's T. Higgins – and Tyler Boyd, mm. you know, and, and the, you know, Drew Sample is a guy who has some talent, but he's not been very overly productive on this team. It's really those two guys. Interesting. You know, and then Giovanni Bernard has done well in receiving too. Yeah. Always been around. Um, yep. It's kind of crazy how consistent he's been in the, in the role that he, that he's asked to, to play for Cincinnati. Um, I was going to say, uh, I kind of agree. And these are some big body receivers. I don't necessarily know, over the – and you guys can correct me. Well, actually, i take that back. I was going to say last week, um, Marvin Jones and uh, I think he was the only one that played because uh, Galladay got – Galladay was out. But um, they the, – the the Lions is probably the, the only team in recent weeks where Washington has played like a big body receiver. Um, and uh, – you get two in Cincinnati, it's going to be an interesting matchup because uh, they're a little bit on the more physical side. And uh, not saying it's like an impossible feat to defend them, but when you have a quarterback like uh, Joe Burrow, who is very talented in terms of just having having to be able to throw the ball the way he can and, and damn near any angle and, and being able to get a receiver open with his arm, if you're throwing it to those big body receivers who are capable of making plays, um, like to what degree are you going to be able to contain them? Because it doesn't matter if it's zone or zone or man, because if they can make a play for your quarterback, uh, he's not going to be hesitant to attack you downfield or in 50, 50 situations. He's not going to be, he's not going to hesitate at all. And that's just one thing that I, I kind of thought about when, when the, 
Cincinnati when Cincinnati plays any type of team, but obviously Washington's up next, so it's going to be interesting. Yeah, um, you know, Burrow doesn't play like a rookie in terms of he doesn't rattle, he doesn't get nervous. Um, you know, he. I think the game has already slowed down for him for the most part. I was very, I was much more impressed with Burrow than I thought I would be. You know, put that way, and um, you know. He can also throw people open. I, I think he's going to be – if this, these few games I watch or any of the occasion, he's going to be an outstanding quarterback. I mean, Cincinnati may ruin him because they're still the Bengals. But, I mean, I think he's got a ton of talent. So I, the whole key, again, to the game, you know, you make Joe Burrow inefficient. How do you do that? You put a lot of pressure on him. Has Washington been able to do that recently? No, not at all. No. Um, so that's the paradox. And, that you know, the paradox of this is what they need to do, they've been bad at. Yeah, I, you know. I want to go double back. Um, the Lions was was the team. You got the Giants who who have Sterling Shepard, he's like six feet. Um, then you got Dallas Cowboys. We already know about um, uh, Amari Cooper, uh, and then the Rams, whose biggest receiver is uh, is Woods, Robert. <clears throat> excuse me, Robert Woods. Right. Uh, so you're really getting down to Arizona Cardinals. Uh, who's the most recent, which is week two, and you have DeAndre you know, Hopkins and Larry Fitzgerald, and you see what Larry Fitzgerald was able to do in the slide. Like he was barely, he was barely, he was barely even touched at the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. Um, so he he had his way. You, you're looking at Tyler Boyd, and um, I mean, yeah, Tyler Tyler Boyd and uh, T Higgins, who are both uh, six four and six two respectively. So. Um, these are these are some interesting matchups that you'll have this week. That 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 is a interesting point that I hadn't considered is just you know, uh, and then we can talk more about the than we've been playing. Yeah, yeah, and then their tight end is also it's pretty decent too. Uh, I forgot yeah. his name, but yeah. Oh uh, no, I don't know. Talking Let me about check. Drew Sample or the other guy Uzmoa or yeah yeah Uzmoa yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um but it. it I don't know if he's hurt. He's only playing. played two games all year. Yeah, so. I was about to say that. I don't know yeah. if he's even been playing. So I, I may, we may be in luck in terms of the tight end. But Uz, I like Uz, Uz, Uzuma, whatever his name is. I like mm-hmm. him. Um, I've seen him play in, in previous years. So that's that's why I popped up my head. So uh, if he's playing, then that's that's something to look out for. But those two receivers, Tyler Boyd and C. Higgins, like you mentioned, um, they are they are more productive than AJ Green. But also, now you think about it, you can't even count on AJ Green against the secondary. You got three good, you got three good receivers that you're going to have to look up um, in, in terms of defending. So um, it's it, it's going it's going to be tough. Uzmo or whatever, by the way, however you pronounce his name, he's on IR, torn Achilles. Okay, so IR. Okay. So, okay. So, All right. So yeah, Just that's one less it's problem. Easier. One less problem. Right. <laughs> um. All right. Well, let's switch sides, guys. Talk about Washington's offense versus this defense. Um. From what I saw, of this defense, they, they're actually they play pretty well. They they're not great. They're not world beaters, um, but you know they they their coverage is seemed tight last week versus Pittsburgh for the most part. What what kills them is you know the, it's kind of like us. They allow an occasional big play, so you get to flip the field. And then the other thing I noticed is sometimes they're just getting a short field because they'll have a special teams turnover or, you know, the offense just doesn't do anything. Uh, but from what I've been able to, what I was able to see versus Pittsburgh is just very sound play overall. And, you know, they were pretty good against the run game for the most part. Uh, last um, week. Yeah, last week, yes. But overall, they're, overall giving, up no. five yards, yeah, yeah. they're giving up five yards of carry. Um, you know, it's a game that logic would say Washington needs to, to do well in their run game, but Washington's run game is atrocious. Right. And the only game that they've done look good at all is the Dallas game. You know, I really expect them to do better last week against sure. the Lions because the Lions aren't that great against the run either. But, you know, the, the five yards of carry is 31st in the league. Right. Well, you know, uh, so, I, but you know, these these are the teams that have run all over them. The Chargers ran all over the Chargers, Browns, Eagles, Ravens, and Titans ran all over sure. the Bengals, the Jaguars, Colts, and the Steelers did not. You know, well, and, and you know, you you have a couple bad games, and those numbers always get skewed. That that's right. part of it too. Um, and you know, I, I think we saw with the Lions game the the key. I remember pointing this out during our pregame show is if you 
run outside, the lines were good. If you run inside, they struggled, and we can't run inside. So, yeah. you know, it's all it all depends on can you match up that run game to fit what they're weak at, which I know the Titans are an inside running team for the most part. You know that they they just well, barely. Yeah, Derrick Henry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they They're... they bulldoze you. So um, think, I don't I I don't know enough about Pittsburgh to really say what their run game does. But well, Pittsburgh just a way better team. Yeah. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, one thing that the Bengals are bad at is sacks. Really? They don't sack people. Okay. They only have eleven sacks on the season. Their leading sacker is Lawson, three point three and a half sacks on the year. Um, they don't get a lot of pressure on quarterbacks. Interesting. You know, what happens, you know, the Steelers put up 300 yards passing. The Colts put up 371. This might be a game, especially if the run game just takes a dump like they did last week, where we see Alex Smith with a billion uh, pass attempts again. Well, I you hope know. not. Well, I, look, I mean, he did pretty well. Jamal brought up a good point, you know, in the last game recap that we did. Jamal, when you were talking about how maybe his arm got worn out there at the end, so he probably doesn't yeah. need 55 pass attempts again. But this might be a game where, because they just don't put pressure on quarterbacks, that Alex can do that, hopefully not to the extent he did last week. But we may see another, a lot of Alex Smith game. Yeah, I saw that too, Jamal. I, I know it wasn't on the show, but I picked up on that pretty quick, how Smith, like, that last drive, he was like 2 for 10 or something like that. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, he got he definitely got bailed out, and um, I I don't know how to say it, but I mean, I, I just I I think it's just weird. Uh, I'll just say how the best I know how. I, I think it's I think it's just weird how um, you know, you have you have talent in the backfield, right? Um, the offensive line generally. Uh, since Cornelius Lucas took over at left tackle, has been playing better. Um, and by the way, well, I'll, I'll ask after I make this point. Um, that generally, the offensive line has been playing better since Cornelius Lucas got in at left tackle. I just don't understand uh, the inability to uh, understand like end game trends, like where you're running best and and what. Can you can take advantage of as a, as an offensive coordinator where you can mm-hmm. take advantage of on the of the defense and continue to run the ball with uh, X Y Z. Whether or not you don't have, whether or not you have faith in Antonio Gibson or not, um, it it doesn't matter. You still have J D McKissick um, who can run the ball as well. Um, and and these are just things that kind of boggles my mind because the run game is not like you you don't have to just stray away from it completely. Uh, and I, I give I give the notion or I acknowledge the fact that you're down twenty four three, unfortunately against the Lions. So you're going to be passing the ball a lot. Right. But even in the last two games, um, you're struggling. Or excuse me, the last two of three games, because the Cowboys I disregard them. The last two or three games, you're struggling to run the ball against teams where you can you can have you can try to sustain some success. And that's that's just a little frustrating aspect of it. Um, my point was being. These these teams are not people that you stray away from, and and if you're gonna put the ball in Alex Smith hands um, as many times as you want to, uh, it's just you're just gonna continue to set yourself up because he's not like what he's doing right now isn't sustainable. He's playing well, but it's just not sustainable, and it's gonna continue to put yourself your offense at day, uh, at risk. Yeah, I think I think we agree that you know he has a limitation of. It's almost like a pitch count. Like, I think after forty passes, he's kind. Of, his arm kind of gets shot. Um, yeah, but, I don't know the number, but there's definitely some point. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's not. It's not a finite number, like with a p- actual pitch count, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, the run game, and you know, I think you make a good point, Jamal. When you find a weakness, just keep attacking it. Like I, they don't do that very well, and. and I, I do think that a big part of this is they do not have five guys to block that they trust uh, on that line, uh, not for the run game. And they don't have a good run-blocking tight end. They don't carry a fullback. So you're always at a big disadvantage when you're trying to run and you just have five blockers. It, and you it, have a very inexperienced running back on top it, of that. Yeah, uh, two, frankly. That's, yeah, and that's why I mentioned Antonio Gibson because – 
Um, although we like them as mm-hmm. as a from a fan perspective, uh, coaches are starting to recognize the, the the team coaches are starting to recognize. You know, he has his limitations right now, and it's we want him to try and develop the best he can. So we're going to have to try and limit his snaps, and we're going to use McKissick um, you know, and to be a more effective uh, player in, in certain down in situations. Uh, and like I said right. on the the post game show, specifically like third downs, they're they're limiting Gibson's exposure on on the field because they want to be more effective and, and a more uh, diverse team when it comes to uh, situations where you can pass or run the ball. And, sure. and uh, Gibson isn't Gibson isn't really able to do that right now, and and they want to make sure that they they have these chances to win. Well, I mean, anyone who follows me on Twitter or you know talks to me on our blog uh, knows. I will keep banging the drum that until this team finds a true lead blocker, a true fullback, or even a good blocking tight end, they're going to struggle with this run game. Uh, they they don't have any, like, you can't just do it with these five guys. Y- you got to have somebody else in there who's a bruiser to kind of help out. Yeah. Uh, do we have a blog? Well, you <laughs> know, comment all. section. Oh, we have comment? I forgot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I tend to ignore people who are beneath me. But anyway, no, you're right. I mean, you can't take mediocre at best offensive an offensive line in run right. blocking with no help at all, with a running back who has no experience, who and, probably and he's isn't not a natural down. inside runner. He's an outside right, runner. Right, and he's not a natural inside runner in the first place and expect that to go do well. You know, you just can't. And so that's exactly right. I mean, you make a very good point, both of you did. Um but it's not fixable this year. No, there's it's nothing not. you can do about it this year. It's an off season problem, and I, I continue to maintain that unless you are the New England Patriots, you cannot win without a running back. Y- I'm not saying everybody has to be a running team, but you have to be able to produce in the sure. run game to a certain extent to win in the NFL. It's not 1974, and you know we're not. I'm not talking about Earl Campbell, but you have to be able to run the ball to some extent, and Washington just cannot do that. Period. And logic would dictate that if they're going to do it against somebody, it's going to be the Bengals. Right. But I just have no faith that they can at all. I mean, it, it comes down to a question. If it's third and three, do you trust any of these backs we have to pick up three yards? No. Yeah. Uh, you got one guy who's good at picking up one and a half yards. That's, that's <laughs> Peyton his, Barber. Yes, Peyton Barber. Uh, <laughs> he does the one yard and fall routine. Right. Gibson and McKissick are both boomer bust. Like, they'll get you seven or they'll get you nothing. <laughs> like, that... Yeah. So y- it's crazy though, cause I, re- I do like McKissick. I, um, I like them both. Uh, I just don't for what they do. I, I I was sitting here thinking about your your question as you asked. Um, I know I don't trust Gibson to get it because he's too impatient right now. Right. But that's why I was getting like I don't like McKissick. McKissick has done well in between the tackles, um, for me. Uh, and truth be told, like that's that's their go to at this point. Like that's their go to back. Um, but. I, I don't know if I can – you know I'm a gambler. I don't know if I can bet the house on the kids again three yards. And, yeah. Uh, if you really need If it. I ask you – I'm not even asking you to bet, bet five bucks. Would you bet on him getting – Oh, of course. <laughs> I would. I would. I would. Well, you're asking the wrong yeah. person about that. That's true. Oh, I, don't, I forget how much money him. Jamal's, like, throwing around these days. Yeah. I bet I – bet, I, bet I probably – I probably – $60 is my cap. Okay. On him. That's a big cap. I, yeah. That's – that's yeah. Yeah. Notice right. I said I don't know if I'd bet the house, but I bet I bet sixty. <laughs> so okay, you're betting so like a nice we... dinner for you and your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Um so... but I, I I get your point just in generally. I understand that these backs you're you really it's hard to count on them in, in certain situations, specifically the ones where you need a yard or two. And typically that's where you'll look especially within a yard, you'll look at the the QB sneak. Um sure. but you, you, I don't you really can't do that with Alex. No. Um, you're not gonna you're not gonna take him out to put Dwayne Haskins in to get the sneak. You can't. You know, shit. Jamal, we had a guy who could get you two yards every time, if I recall. That oh, player, yeah, for sure. That Landon player Detroit. was let go in favor of Peyton Barber. Well, and right. in Detroit. Um, yeah. I, I'm I'm exhausted by 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 fighting this fight, but I, I refuse to stop. <laughs> I'm just going to say too. I'm just going to drink some Gatorade and I'm going to keep pushing. This was a this was a terrible mistake. Um you yep. you guys let you guys let that man go to to allow a running back to stay on his roster and average 2 yards a carry. Right. Uh, so <laughs> right. And don't get it. 
Yes, the the patented Peyton two yard run. That's what I call it. Um, you know, you know he's good for two, so you better get him in at fourth and one. <laughs> exactly, fourth and one and a half. I'm not even that confident with him. Um, <laughs> okay, so yeah. can we summarize this? So the summary, the summary, because we need to move on. Yeah, well, the we, summary, yeah, we need to finish up. Yeah, the summary of this here is, um, in terms of of Washington offense, we have no faith that they're going to run, but. The Bengals' pass rush is mostly awful. And so I think this is going to be a game where we're going to see a lot of Alex Smith Mm -hmm. and a lot of short dump-offs. I think J.D. McKissick's McKissick's going to have a big game. And if they're going to win this game, it's going to be on the strength of Alex Smith's arm, uh, you know, such as it is. Because the Bengals just aren't that good. They aren't. No, no. But, you know, they lose. They they get beat by by good teams, and they lose to bad teams for the most part. They're better than Washington. But um, I think that's what I see here. Uh, they ought to be able to run, but they're not going to run. Yeah, I don't think they're that much better, uh, you know, especially now that uh, Smith is playing and he's, you know, proven that he can still play quarterback. Um, all right, guys, uh, we got to do predictions and wrap this thing up. So uh, let's do that. Jamal, I'm going to go to you first. Uh, what Ooh. is your prediction for this game? Um. I've been torn thinking about this because um, I'm also looking at this in a in a game perspective as well. Right. Is the line uh, one point for the Bengals right now still? So no one is uh, Washington's favorite. Oh, Washington's um, favorite. Okay. Yeah, it started at two, and I, at last I checked, it was at like one and a half. Um, so the line went towards Cincinnati, like in their favor. Right, uh, but that's basically but, a toss up at that point. It's it's getting there. Yeah. Getting there. Um, if you're a fan of Cincinnati, you think they'll win. Just bet the money line, get you some plus money. Um, to answer your question, I think. Oh my goodness. See, it's not easy, is it? This game it's is tough. Not. It really is. It's not. Um, I, 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 I do think Washington finds a way. Um, the one thing that I'm always worried about is teams who are on losing streaks because you, you just you just don't see the win coming. Right. But at the same time, both these teams are on losing streaks, so it's like you're, you're just in a situation where somebody got to win. It's not going to be another time. <laughs> um, so I think Washington finds a way to win at home. Um, it's going to be tough, but I also think it'll be a high-scoring game. We're looking at like um, 30, 31-27, 31-28, something similar to what we had last last mm-hmm. week, except for it's not a point where a, a team has to come back. It's going to be back and forth, um, and that's where I think this is. Okay. Um, 31 28, Washington. 31 28. Wow. Okay. I have no faith that Washington can, even in their wildest dreams, score 31 points against anybody. Um, oh, for, by the way, injuries, Rolf, I forgot the injuries. Um, the, they, well, they had a bunch of DNPs Ryan Anderson, John Christian, DeShazer Everett, Dustin Hopkins, Dontrell Inman, Cornelius Lucas, Jared Norris on Wednesday, and the Bengals, the, there were a bunch of veterans days off, but the guys who were, out and not practicing Wednesday were Joe Mixon and Jermaine Pratt. So mm-hmm. that's injuries. Um, so for my prediction, I'd really love to pick Washington to win this game because I think they have a shot at it. And I think that um, Alex Smith looked pretty good last week. He, he made the offense for two quarters look like a real NFL offense for the first time all year, basically. Um, but that having been said, I just have no faith right now. I really don't. And so I think this is going to be a close game that the Bengals eke out a win at something along the lines of, I'm going to say 27, 24 Bengals. So kind of almost, uh, identical last week. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm kind of with you. Um, I, I think Smith did show us a lot more. Um, I'm worried about the whole Dustin Hopkins thing, by the way. You know, like, they, at some point, they need to flip to the other guy we have on the roster. The, in Kari the Vedvik? Yeah, Vedvik. Just I because. Think his name is. They need to work on his job. I think they need yeah. to keep on board. Eventually, I keep, I've stayed eventually like the last three or four years. Sorry to cut you off, but this, my Dustin Hopkins is a certain point for me. And the, the eventually words that is just going to eventually catch up to him, and they'll be sick enough, but it's like, why weren't you sick of this man costing you games X amount of months ago, X amount of games ago? Yeah, I, I think they need to let this guy, especially since Hopkins has a groin injury, just tell him, all right, you're out for the week because you're hurt. 
let this kid get a shot. Um, anyway, I, I, as far as a final score, I'm going to guess it's a very close one. I'm going to say, like, 28... I, I think Washington wins it, 28 to, like, 27, 28, 24, something like that. Yeah, I find my lack of faith disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, because this is a game they should win, but, frankly, the Bengals are looking at it the same way. Bengals right. looking yeah. at this as a game they should oh, win. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And they should. No one should look yeah. at us as, like, a hard game. Right now. Yeah, and if exactly if you're listening to this, don't you know better? You're 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 a Washington fan, right? But don't be surprised if they lose, right? But I, I do think I do feel strongly like this is this is one that they. I don't, it doesn't matter. I just feel like this one needs to come up, come up on top, but it, it really doesn't matter. What we're talking about yeah. Today. Last week I was at my mom's house and she's like, "Well, do you want to watch the end of the game?" I'm like. They're going to lose. I know they're going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, but it's all tied up. You seemed very excited. when they I'm like, yeah, but I know. I know what's going to happen at this point. <laughs> you knew that field goal was going to go. was going right, to get exactly, made, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, all right, guys. We should wrap this up because we're over time. I want to thank everyone for listening, and we will talk to you guys after the game. Go Washington. Later. <laughs>